And welcome back to WMMBAM.com, keyword video, where we are conducting our primary election season interviews in the studio with us now clerk of courts mitch needleman his predecessor scott ellis they both vie for this republican nomination doing something a little different than we've done in the past and we're going to turn this over to the candidates and allow them to question each other we will start with the challenger scott ellis what is your first question for mitch needleman let me turn your mic on that will help there is we it go. good yeah is you're good, good? Go. Right, my question is you know, Mitch, you've stated many times how you went into negotiation for the labor contract. And, and I don't even go into the fact, bid or no bid, but you did a negotiation for the labor contract. I'd like to know what is Matt Dupree's involvement with Source 2? Was he paid by Source 2 when the contract was awarded? And does he draw a monthly stipend from Source 2? Okay, Scott. Now, one, you brought that up last time at the Vieira one, the first time no, that was run. That was Blue Air. This is about Source 2, so I don't want to change the question. I'm not asking about Blue Air. Matt Dupree's involvement with Source 2. Again, you brought up the question about Matt Dupree being involved in different things that I'm involved with, with too. I went right to Matt and asked him if he had a contract with Blue Wear or Blue Gym or Roseware or Source 2, and the answer was no. So Now, what he gathers or what he gets, I don't know. We're not a company again. So to your answer is that I no. You, you didn't really. All right. So are you saying then Matt Dupree has drawn no money from Source 2? I don't know. I'm not Matt Dupree. You were involved in a negotiation with Source 2. Matt Dupree had nothing to do with those negotiations? There is nothing that shows that Matt Dupree, on what I pay Source 2, that Matt Dupree receives any funds. Hey, look here, buddy. I'm not state attorney, so I'm not here to do a state attorney interrogation. I'm asking you, was Matt Dupree involved in negotiation? I understand you the pay answer, Source 2. What Source 2 pays their consultant is up to Source 2. I understand you don't pay the consultant directly. I'm asking you, is Matt Dupree involved with Source 2, yes or no? I don't know. Oh, my God. Okay, that's fine. Um, let me follow up here. Let me let me follow up with this because because that that's an interesting question. I know you and Matt have worked together in, yes, the we past, have in the past. And I know when you first came into office, he basically came to me with information about the changes you were going to make in the office. Right. How closely is he working with your office? Is he being paid to work with your office? And is he part of any other negotiations that are going on right now? He is, he's not involved with any negotiations with me, nor does he work for the office. However, he is uh, part of my campaign team for re-election. All right. Your question for Scott Ellis. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. You know, Scott, from the start of this campaign, you have alleged that I am on the take, give millions to my buddies, a liar, and just generally an evil person. Well, I didn't say you give millions to your buddies. I said you did millions of dollars worth of no-bid contracts. As I, don't, I don't think the consultants are taking that kind of money in. As a matter of fact, you've, claimed, you've even claimed that I'm Hitler. You base uh, that claim. No, I said you run a police state at the office. You and base that's true. You base that claim that I have rewritten the oath and swearing in the employees, having them swear loyalty to me and not the office. Now that we know that oath uh, that I use is the same oath that you use, the same oath that the clerk Sandy Crawford used, the same oath that clerk Ray Winstead used. As a matter of fact, four generations of clerks use the oath. Do you now admit that you were mistaken? And apologize for calling me Hitler. I never said you were Hitler. That was a comment that Sean picked up on, and he put that in Brevard Times. I said you run a police state. You do run a police state. Let me read that, No, let me finish my answer to your question, which really wasn't a question. It was actually a statement, a number of statements. Your question is, do I apologize for calling you Hitler? I would say, yes, I apologize for calling you Hitler if I call, called you Hitler. However, I would not apologize for saying you run a police state. Your most recent action this week proved that, which is you are going to supervise elections. You want the list of everybody changing parties since qualifying so you can go beat them down. If you truly believe that the people like working for you and they're coming around, your first assumption would be they're changing parties to vote for you, and you should be happy they're changing parties to vote for you. Instead, your assumption, which is probably correct, they're changing parties to vote for me. That's why you want that list. There's no other reason to get it. You may have a few hundred people that change parties. You have over 150,000 registered Republicans in Brevard County. That is a minuscule number. And you're going to pull lists. When you go to pull lists to do your mail outs, you'll get the most recent list of, of all Republicans. You don't need the list of party switchers other than you want to go single those people out. And that's the way this office has been run for a year and a half. And that goes all the way back to the outsourcing meeting. Here we are on Wednesday afternoon, 143 people in a meeting. They know nothing about what's going to happen. And boom, here you go, 
It's Wednesday afternoon. As of close of business tomorrow, you no longer work for the clerk's office. If you want to come to work Friday morning, you sign this application right now. Here it is. That's the way this office has been run for a year and a half. Is nothing but like straight out of 1984, a George Orwell office. So, no, I don't think you're a Hitler. I do think you do a very good imitation of a police state. Thank you. I accept your apologies. All right, Scott, any other questions for Mitch here? Well, we get more than one question. Yeah, I'll throw another one. Oh, that's great. We got a little bit more time. I think that's fantastic. You know, Mitch has an attorney hired up in Tallahassee named Stephen Hogue. This guy was making $30,000 a year in Tallahassee. He used to be a staff member for your juvenile justice committee. Uh, His job evidently was to watch over the CCOC, and I guess that's because when the CCOC told you not to give raises, you got a little upset. Therefore, you put a tail on them. Now, according to Mr. Hogue's contract it says if the consultant is not called upon to provide services in a given month the consultant will nonetheless be paid the monthly retainer called for each and every month during term of the agreement i'd like to know how you justify as brevard county clerk of court spending thirty thousand dollars a year on a tallahassee lobbyist to watch after the organization is supposed to be checking on your budget thank, ahead, thank you scott i appreciate the opportunity in which you do that first of all steve is not an attorney for this office he is a consultant for this office dealing with the complications of the ccoc and the facc as you know those are very complicated and very detailed stuff especially dealing with a, a budget that's based now on competition between the other counties and performance-based budgeting it is something that i need to have help in which to understand and be successful at doing what i've done we have been successful in changing the attitudes of the CCOC on the spending of money. And as you remember, you were at that particular meeting uh, when the CCOC reversed their decision and now allows the clerks, once the budget process is completed uh, and the money is allocated to the different clerks across the state, that the CCOC now has no longer has jurisdiction over those dollars. And that was a big move. And because of the research and the work that Steve was done for us up there in Tallahassee, we've been successful. Uh, It took us six months to turn that around, we did. At the same time, as we look at the changes that are going about with the CCOC, such as looking at how do you measure each and piece of paper that comes through there, it gives me an upper hand to have an insight to which way they're leading and how we can play for it. Right now, they're looking at the different case numbers and giving weight to each one. It's very important that we understand how much weight is given to each one of those categories because it will affect the dollar amount that will come to us. It gives me a second voice in Tallahassee in which to make sure that I protect the interests of Avara County, and it's worked very well. Well, you said the CCOC never had jurisdiction was your original comment. Are you now I, say, Are you saying Mr. Hogue has given you some reports? Yes. Written sir. reports? So yes, I If I, I do did. a public records request... For Mr. Hogue's written reports from Tallahassee, I'll be able to get those, right? Of course, Scott. Just checking because, you know, this was never <laughs> mentioned. We've been here for a year and a half. You never mentioned any debate. You've hired a Tallahassee lobbyist slash consultant slash attorney to go up there at 30000 bucks a year and look over to CCOC. I, I just finally got part of this report. It's really been difficult getting any kind of public records. I now, don't... How, many, how many people are on contract with the office? Oh, we know Steve Hogue. You know you've got Bonnie Roberts. I mean, how many other people are on contract like this, personal contract? Well, first of all, not personal, the business Well, you contract, call whatever okay. you want, business contract. Uh, I think you got the two. I think those are the only two we've got. All right. Mitchell, let's give you another question for Scott. Here. I don't have a question for Scott. Let's listen to him. All right. Let right. me follow up. Let me close it up then with this uh, follow-up to what we were talking about on air last. And, again, the confrontation between your supporters, one of them a high-level employee of yours, Mitch, uh, at that Vieira debate was disturbing to me. It was unprofessional. It was uncalled for. Folks are going to have differences of opinion when it comes to political races. I mean, um, I have been friends with both of you guys for years. My question is, if it is an employee of your office found to have been the aggressor in this situation, will you either terminate or otherwise discipline that employee? And, Scott, the question to you be, if it were your employee, how would you handle it? We'll start with you. Uh, of course. If we have somebody just um, that takes something and violates the law or something that's in our handbook and we take – We'll take action. But I want you to understand this time, this was a recipient this time, not the aggressor. Just asking the question since the investigation is not done. And the way the situation has been described to me, your employee was the aggressor from those who described it to me. The employee was not the one that the arrest affidavit was filed. And the arrest affidavit that's in the state attorney's office at this time for review uh, is not the employee. The employee was attacked. Uh, who who, Who put in that arrest affidavit? 
I would believe the person got it hit, Scott. Would you not? Would you no, not? I, I would like to make this very clear because this is the way you weasel world thinks. The arrest affidavit is not from the deputies on scene. The arrest affidavit is filed by your employee. That's who's filed that. That's correct. It, I, I could just as easily go down and do the same kind of paperwork on you if I wanted to. It would obviously be bogus. Certainly, certainly we've never come to blows, but I could do the same kind of paperwork on you. Anybody can go down there and file that type of report and call it an arrest affidavit. The fact is that most of the people that were my supporters and other people there that were really not tied with either one, they were out there in the hallway writing statements for the deputy sheriffs. Your guy was out there running around in the parking lot waving his arms to the deputies. They tried to calm him down. Let me get to it and close it up with, uh, again, were this an employee of yours in this circumstance and found to be in the wrong, how would you handle it, Scott? I, I would have to do disciplinary action. I, I can't imagine somebody doing that. It was a very bizarre thing. Bill, I've been to a lot of forums. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Knew this was going to be a contentious race. Gentlemen, thank you both for your time today, and thanks to you for joining us on WMMBAM.com. Check back here for more of these political interviews and these uh, face-offs as you get the opportunity. Nice to have you along. We'll see you next time.